Hello everyone, we're ready for another student webinar. This is number 58. And the thing about our student webinars is we take something from the questions from the students who are, are working on our courses. Uh, we have several courses, several credentials that we help people get through as well as some background things like uh, pharmacology, pathophysiology, uh, you know, to and, and medical terminology and anatomy. So you could see some of that in these student webinars. But a question came in this past week that was really good. And I asked him if it'd be okay if I go ahead and say, let's do that on our next student webinar because it's similar to um, to things that I see in textbooks. And in fact, I don't think this one was uh, one of our students. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look again. But the question was so good. But uh, there's, I don't want to say it's one of our questions because I think there's an error in it. <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing to say, right? So we're going to talk about thyroid uh, surgeries how you divide those up. There's several codes to use for that. And it gets really confusing because the thyroid is divided up, can be divided up into sections. So we're going to talk a lot about anatomy as well as how the codes work. And I played around with the graphics and I think I did a good job. Let me know what you think, if it's helpful to you the way I set it up. Because if it is, we'll do that again and again. I want to make sure that it resonates with you and your learning style. So let's talk about the question that came in. Uh, it was to select the appropriate CPT and ICD code, but actually, it they didn't. We didn't do the ICD, which is really odd for me because you know I love ICD. So we're only focusing on the CPT, and the uh, scenario is that they removed. 35% of a left thyroid lobe via ethmosectomy ith and uh, the diagnosis was a benign thyroid tumor or neoplasm. Okay, so we're not going to we're not going to really think about the um, the decode for that. And uh, the student put in two codes. Uh, on the multiple choice, because usually they, there's four choices with ours, but there was two codes listed and uh, wasn't sure which one to use. The first thing that we should do when we look at this, if we're trying to take an exam, like a certification exam, uh, let's say that I want to narrow it down. and you can you they will usually use two diagnosis codes right so you might see the d49.7 and see something okay well you can think in your your head that a c code and d codes are for neoplasms right we know that because of the neoplasm table and and it's an alpha uh you know it's a numeric alphanumeric uh, code set for ICD and C and D codes are cancer codes but they start off on the table when you look at it with malignancy second you know primary secondary malignancies cancer in situ and then it says you know uh, benign and then it has a couple other ones that aren't used as much, but we'll talk, we're not really talking about those. The, the fact is, is that if you had a choice between a C code and a D code and you had to make a quick choice on a benign neoplasm, it's gonna be a D code because the benign codes are usually really high C codes or D codes, just the way it is, okay? and you can look at this by just going through the neoplasm table or looking at the tabular, looking at the C codes, and you'll notice the far, the more pages you turn, you get first into the primary, right? Then it'll be secondary codes. And as the number goes up, C whatever, uh, it will then get into uh, higher, higher numbers. 
and then get into decodes. All right, so that's a one way, but we only have two choices here and we're not gonna think about that because again, uh, they often like to do that where they'll give you two choices, not three. Uh, so the two codes we're really gonna pay attention to is 60225 and 60212. So if you have your manuals, I urge you to go look at the 6,000 codes. Go there first, we're gonna talk about them and I'm going to give you some tips uh, how we do our bubble and highlighting I didn't put that here per se but I did bubble I mean excuse me and highlight and underline some terms so this is your opportunity to mark your manual up with notes that you feel will be beneficial to you okay so you don't have to necessarily copy what I tell you but uh, the way I did it what I want you to do is take notes in your notebook and then look at the manual and put notes in your manual so that it'll help you remember whatever works best for you so we have our bat technique which you know is fabulous however it's designed to make it your own right so you're going to put little helpful hints that as i always you know that resonate with you that will help you remember what you need to do you don't have to copy the bat technique you know exactly the way that Laureen did it you know uh, make it your own right so it because it's just a teaching tool it's a tool so our two codes you need to go to the six thousands um, let's first look at some anatomy and we were uh, given permission by find a code to use their graphics this is a great graphic i've already used it on some other things that i'm working on and uh real pleased with the the graphics that they've created for themselves so if you are a find a code user uh, then again you can take advantage of these great graphics and hopefully that'll help you with your anatomy and your terminology so the thyroid is often referred to is uh, looking like a butterfly and you'll notice here that it does it's it's kind of um not it looks like two wings you know it, uh, that's the best way to explain it and it wraps around the um trachea so this is a front view on the one side and then that's a back view on the other side so uh you can see all of the anatomy that surround that is surrounding the thyroid and uh in your throat whenever you go to the doctor and they palpate they'll palpate up here and then they're feeling for the carotid arteries they want to feel that they're not like trying to leap out of your neck right they can uh, that's how you check a pulse you see them do that in the movies and the tv shows to see if someone's dead right check their pulse in their throat or when you see people running and they stop oh, yeah <laughs> i always think that's funny but again that's that's what they're doing those carotid arteries that that are right there now uh, the other thing that the provider is going to palpate is your thyroid now for men it's nice because they have the Adam's apple it's right below the Adam's apple with them women don't have that protruding Adam's apple uh, uh, that piece of cartilage that sticks out it but you can feel your your thyroid now even if you're a fluffier person you can probably still feel that thyroid and if you notice that uh, by the picture it is kind of lump it's not a smooth organ it's a gland but you can feel it there and kind of wiggle it around don't be squeezing too much but uh, again it starts right here and at the center is the isthmus and then it goes out in what you know looks like two wings but it's actually lobes so you have a left lobe and a right lobe okay and uh, then of course behind the trachea is the uh, esophagus the other thing that you want to be familiar with is the parathyroid glands and those are little tiny pearls there's two on each side that um, are on the the lobes 
and they make a difference. So you have your thyroid gland. Now let's talk about the actual purpose of the thyroid. This is going to be beneficial to you uh, as far as um, any type of an endocrine diagnosis will fall with the thyroid. The thyroid does a lot. I was just reading today as I was getting ready for this that it is a small but mighty gland. And if you are having problems with your thyroid gland, boy, does it mess the body up. So you notice here that I put the arrow and showed you that that center part, that little junction at where it's pinched, that's called the isthmus. And it's important that you know that. That's the isthmus. And then each side of the wings that wrap around the trachea, those are lobes. Then they have laterality. Now, again, see, they've circled uh, the parathyroids. The parathyroids are these, like it's a little tiny pearls that are in there. That's the best way to uh, explain them. But they are different than the thyroid. Okay. They, they are an additional gland. So let's start at the uh, information that you don't have to have this memorized, but it'll be helpful to you if you understand the way the thyroid works. The uh, thyroid is uh, going to help with the calcium in the body. And so when you see lab tests, you'll see calciums being checked. And if we don't have enough calcium in our system, not only does that affect the bones, but it also affects the heart because your heart is chemical, chemical, electrical, as well as uh, muscular. Now, the thyroid releases uh, calcite. Uh, I'm going to put the emphasis in the wrong place, but it's this calcium type, uh, the liquid. I don't know what I want to try to say. It's it's a um, uh, somebody give me a good word. It's calcitonin. Yeah, there you go. So what it does is it actually tells the osteoblasts to um, put calcium in the bone. Now, your osteoblasts are part of the bones themselves, okay? It's the, it's the uh, cells the, that work and help create uh, blood cells in the bone. So if we have uh, too much calcium, we will, our body gets rid of it. And that's where people can have things like kidney stones, right? Because you have to get rid of the excess calcium in the body. If you don't have enough, then you lo lose density for the bones. And then you have things like um, osteoporosis. Now, the parathyroid glands, uh, they are different. You've got two on each side. Well, they kick in when the calcium that is uh, uh, in the blood starts indicating that it's too low. So really, honestly, your whole body has these things like sensors in them that tell the brain, hey, we don't have enough calcium, so what are we going to do? The parathyroids say, don't worry, that's my job, I'll take care of it, and they tell the body to start producing, um, you know, getting more calcium. And then the, but the thyroid itself is, uh, there is kind of the ones that are regulating everything, keeping track of everything. This gland also has a parathyroid hormone, and that hormone tells the osteoclasts, which is a different type of a component of the bone, that um, uh, what to do. And then it will also regulate that uh, the calcium so that uh, we have enough bone density. If we don't, of course, again, osteoporosis is the result. Um, now, that is mostly talking about bone density, but the thyroid does so much more than just regulate bone density. The thyroid also has hormones that um, tell the body 
uh, that you uh, it will affect mood it will affect also uh, energy levels in the body so if a, some if somebody has hyperthyroidism then uh, the the thyroid is working too much and therefore the person's jittery they they're like bird like they can't put on weight they um uh have trouble concentrating uh they probably can't sleep and uh, there's a whole list you, you should take the time to study hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism we're not going to get into that part. We, we've done that. That's more ICD, right? And today we're focusing on um, the CPT codes. But I want to give you this review, this background. If you have hypothyroidism, it's not working enough. And so, therefore, you're usually heavier set, a little fluffier. Uh, you'll uh, Things like hair growth. Your hair is thinning and brittle um, also it uh, will make the eyes bulge so if you see somebody that has eyes that are bulgy and their hair is thinner and brittle looking they probably have hypothyroidism and usually uh, sometimes they'll have a goiter or you know in, inside the the thyroid would be enlarged okay so that's some basics about the anatomy the structure of the thyroid and a little background about what it does, including bone density. So let's look at the two codes that were given in our question. The first code was 60225. So when we look at that in the manual, so I encourage you to go open up your manuals, your CPT manual, go to 60225. And the first thing that you need to see in this code is that it's a total thyroid lobectomy. Okay, so uh, total thyroid lob uh, lobectomy unilateral with contralateral subtotal lobectomy, including isthmectomy, which I can't say. Okay, so again, we know we have the two lobes and the central, the isthmus, that's kind of the center piece. The patient that we talked about, it's going to be pertinent. They always want to know if it was a total or partial, okay? Because you don't have to take the whole thyroid out. You can take it in sections if you want. So uh, find a code was nice enough to have a description is when a person has a total thyroidectomy, usually it is uh, due to having an abnormality, uh, some type of a neoplasm, or it uh, maybe they're just doing a biopsy and they need to take a larger section with uh, margins. Um, nodules is something that you'll see uh, a term. Uh, some, some people could have multi-nodular uh, thyroids. Uh, let's see, you could have a hot or cold nodules and goiters, okay? So again, then there's a description. I went ahead and put that in how they remove them. What they, you'll see it. If you see somebody that has a scar that usually is from here to here and um, kind of curved, that, that means that they, they had their thyroid worked on. Okay, so the two codes that are commonly used in this section is going to be 60220 and 60225 and the 225 code is the one that was in the question okay so let's look though at the difference between 60220 and 225 the first thing that you need to notice since the total thyroid it's the entire lobe is removed okay now, remember, isthmus, two lobes. So we're taking one side total lobe out. The, you know, the other thing that you could, the, the thyroid is shaped kind of like the lungs are, except for the lungs aren't connected with an isthmus. They're connected with the bronchial 
uh, passages. So we're compare it to that. We're taking one whole lung out, right? We're taking one entire lobe out. So if you're going to use 60220 or 225, the whole lobe is taken. Um, with 220, it states that uh, they could take the margins and they could take part or the entire isthmus, okay, which is the connecting. Now, let, let me give you a little tip. Don't worry about the isthmus, okay? They're either going to take it all or they're not going to, or they're going to take a portion, but that's the same. It's the same in every one of the codes, right? So don't even worry about that. All of them are going to say a part or entire isthmus, right? So again, don't worry about the isthmus at all. Whether they, if they do tap into that to take some, it'll be in the documentation. But don't worry about it, okay? That's extra verbiage and stuff that you think, oh no, you know, then I have to look for the code that says the isthmus was included. It's in all of them. All right. So 60225, what's the difference between 20 and 225? The difference is that. With 225, they're taking part of the other lobe, not the entire other lobe, because that would be a total thyroidectomy, everything. This is unilateral. They're taking one side, and they're taking a portion of the other lobe. Contralateral is the term that you're going to see used the most in doc documentation, which just means the other lobe, bilateral, okay? And, um, but the key is they're taking a part of it. All right, now we understand, let's look at some graphics. Uh, this is an awesome graphic and I added things to it. So if we look at 60220, here's the nodule. This is, this is what's gonna be removed. And they are going to take some of the isthmus, but we don't care about that. That's this part right here because it, you can take all of it or a portion of it. It's going to be on all those codes. But if you take, if you use 60220, you take this entire lobe, the entire one side is being removed and all of the other side is being left intact. So if you see the bullets up in the corner, it says one load, part or all of the isthmus. That's what 60220 means. So there's a nodule. We're taking one lobe out, just like if you were to remove one lung, okay? So that's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. However, what does 60225 mean? Now, we've got our nodule. Again, we're taking one entire lobe, we're taking some or all of the isthmus and some or part of the other lobe, but there's still gonna be thyroid tissue left in place intact, right? So therefore they've got a working thyroid and they've got at least one parathyroid working as well, right? So that's the difference between 60225 and 60220. We're taking one lobe. Those are total uh, thyroid, uh, total unilateral lobectomy. Unilateral just means, hey, we're not taking both of the whole thyroid out and we're taking one complete lobe and part of the other one. Again, throw out the isthmus, we don't care about it. Very good, okay. Now let's look at 60212. Keyword here, partial thyroid lobectomy. Unilateral means we're not taking out the whole thyroid with contralateral subtotal lobectomy, including ethectomy. So again, don't worry about the end. Don't worry, we know it's contralateral. So with 60212, we're taking some of the other side but this is a unilateral code, not a total. So again, how do we 
we remember partial thyroid lobectomy. This one actually is not very common. They usually do the other. And um, uh, the specific reasons why they might do this is, you know, again, if they have something hot going on in there, they have different words for that. Uh, and then a description of how they go in, they'll still have that same neck scar. So the two codes and the notes that you need to make for yourself in your manual, the, the two codes that would be used for a partial would be 60210 and then 60212. So the question had 60212. 60210 is part of one lobe. And then uh, that's it. You could take the isthmus, doesn't matter. You could or could not take part or all of it, doesn't matter. But 60212 is part of one lobe and a part of the other lobe. So we're taking the isthmus in between, but we're taking part of one lobe, maybe the center, but we're taking part of the other lobe too. All right, so part and part, not total. What does that look like? Well, this is what it looks like. So 60210, we're taking part of one lobe. And if we get into the isthmus, that's fine. If we don't, that's fine. But that's all we're doing. We're just taking a hunk out of one lobe. That's it. We're not getting past the isthmus into the other lobe. That lobe stays intact. Okay. So. Um, Again, if this is the scenario that's being used, they're probably going to end up uh, with uh, three of their parathyroids still intact, and they'd be taking one because it's up in that corner. So we've divided it up. The butterfly lost part of one wing. That's it. Nothing else. However, 60212, they're taking part of both lobes. Okay. Not completely, but just part of both lobes. Now, I know you're excited about my artwork, <laughs> and I don't know how they do this. Um, I've I've seen some procedures online. So uh, again, and it matters where the nodule is, uh, you know, what's being done, why it's being done, how much they need to take. If they can leave thyroid tissue in there, they want to, because it's no fun to, to be without a thyroid or just to have a thyroid that isn't working well. It messes with you big time, even uh, down to itchy skin. I mean, it just messes with all body systems. Uh, it's a pretty, like I said, small but mighty gland, and um, poor, our poor glands don't get enough credit. They they do a lot for our body, but they're just kind of like silent workers until something goes wrong, and when something goes wrong, it goes downhill very fast. So in my imagination, if we're going to take, you know, part of each lobe, then I pictured, hey, we'll just cut off the bottom, you know. Uh, so. If you have a nodule, you know, we're cutting it, cutting it in half transverse wise and you get to keep a portion of each lobe and you lose a portion of each lobe. So, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter how much of the isthmus is taken because that is uh, non-contributory for these codes. It's on all of them. So part of one lobe and part of the contralateral lobe. So your key words are uh, total and partial. And if they uh, took a, uh, you know, if they took a portion of the contralateral lobe. All right. I'm having so much fun with this. I'm getting going through pretty fast. Um, let's let's look at this. But first, let me just. Okay, we'll look at those questions when we get done because I see a bunch of them. Some of them are real pertinent. Okay, so the question, we will go back to the question. Removal of 35%, what does that tell you? That is not a total lobe. 
it's only 35% of a lobe, of the left thyroid lobe. So 35% of one lobe. The other lobe is not mentioned. And then it says, you know, how did they go in there and they do it? It's the mastectomy, which just means that they do it in that area and they're going to take part of that too. So it doesn't matter if they do or don't, right? So when you look at the the two codes, you know that the 60225 is a total code. They have to take the all of one lobe. So that one doesn't work because they only took 35%. But then if you go look at 60212, you, you take a partial, but that code also means you have to take partial of the other lobe, and they didn't. So neither one of those is the right answer. Uh, if you go and look at the codes that I gave you, which are the two codes for each of those sections that are for lobectomies, the uh, 60210 is the correct answer. It gets the gold star because it's a partial for the one lobe, 35%, and they're not taking the contralateral lobe. And then 60220 is total and nothing on the side. So we know they only took 35%. Again, so neither one of those ones that, that the student put in the question, and it doesn't, you know, maybe there was other uh, options, and maybe these were the two they thought, was the right answer uh, that they were taking between. I don't know. I didn't inquire anymore. I just grabbed and said, hey, let's do a lecture on it. So again, now we know the verbiage that you need. We know the purpose of the thyroid. We know the shape of the thyroid. We know the uh, anatomy surrounding the thyroid, the verbiage used to describe the thyroid itself, its parts how they would remove the thyroid, a thyroidectomy. And again, there's another code for a total thyroidectomy when they just take everything. Okay, that's a different code. But that wasn't in the question, so we didn't go over that. And our key words to look for is going to be total or partial. We don't care about the isthmus, and we want to know contralateral, was it involved or not? That's how you're going to be able to determine quickly whether these codes are um, the right. Now, if they had said they took 35% of the left thyroid and 35% of the right thyroid lobe, then you have six zero. Um, then, then you have that six zero two one two. It's part and part, right? Okay, so I. Th think now we can go for questions and if you want to see that graphic that I used it's actually here at this uh, particular link which our find a or uh, will be up for the students to look at in the CCO club cco.us forward slash club so now let's get to our questions okay uh, Susan's asking about CCO, uh, the CEUs, that you don't have to be in the, the course itself to get the CEUs. Uh, once the lectures are done, what we do is, um, they, if they're going to be put up in the club, they will. It won't be just for students, for the student webinars. It'll be in the club. Uh, but first, after it's recorded, we transcribe everything that I said. Uh, so that people can have a written, just like having it in a book. Then we have our CEU questions and we submit them to uh, the credentialing bodies for CEUs. Uh, AAPC and AHIMA both co credent you know, the, if you've got approval for one, the other one approves it. But uh, right now, everybody's running behind on approvals for CEUs. So that's why we can't give CEUs at the time you're watching this live right now. Things will change in the future, I'm sure. It'll get better. But even if you're in, if you're in the club, Susan, you can get um, the CEUs that have already been approved that are in there, whether you're in the course or not. Um, okay, Whitney said, what is post-procedural hypothyroidism? Well, two things. One, if 
a patient has, no matter how much of the thyroid is taken, it traumatizes that gland, right? So it can tip the body into hypothyroidism. It won't work as well. It's, it's you know, recuperating. Now, if um, the what's left of the thyroid can't keep up afterwards, then it would be post-procedural because they took out part of the thyroid. So that's the procedure, uh, hypothyroidism. They didn't have hypothyroidism before, but because of the procedure, then uh, and the fact that they have less thyroid, they have post-procedural hypothyroidism. There's also uh, uh, like a status or uh, not a complication, but if if a person's having had a problem with the body after a procedure and um, their thyroid isn't keeping up, it could be a temporary post-procedural. But that's what that means. And there's a specific code to describe that. I just don't have it memorized. It's an E code. And I think it's like EO6 maybe or EO3. I, I can't remember. It's one of those. And moving down, I had a total thyroidectomy with a partial parathyroidectomy, right side. So in, in other words, what she's saying is that the right side was completely taken out and she got um, a partial parathyroidectomy. So part of the right side, the, the, the pearl. They can actually take those parathyroids out Say they're going to remove your thyroid. They can take the parathyroids out and put them into your chest and let them sit there and wait. Uh, and that way they still do their job. Isn't that crazy? Uh, so for history of thyroidectomy, she said Z9049 or Z9089. Uh, um, you'll have to tell me what the difference is between 49 and 89 because I can't bring up my encoder. So I'd have to, to look for that one. For a history of thyroidectomy. So if you put the description in there. Uh, yep. They were going to offer to take uh, my... Uh, I have hyperparathyroidism because I have a kidney dysfunction, which you've heard me talk about it before. Because my kidneys spill, um, they're porous, so they spill um, chemicals, calcium, sugar, you know. Uh, but the, the calcium goes through me too fast, so my parathyroids think that I'm always low on calcium, and so they double down and make tons of calcium so I have kidney stones because it so it builds up in my kidneys and so I have to take medicine for that um, or they could have taken out my parathyroids and that would have stopped it I just would have quit producing calcium the the positive thing is I have amazing bone density right because my parathyroids are working overtime and um, you know and once you get to menopause, the parathyroids kind of shut down, thus producing less calcium by like 50%. So I should be good in another year or so. Uh, let's see. Whitney says, what's the difference between abnormal thyroid function studies and low TSH levels? I actually did a lecture on this, I think, Whitney, here recently. Uh, there is a significant difference. It, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, though. But it's probably on YouTube. It, it, on our medical coding cert, go out and, and just type in TSH, and it may come up. Or thyroid function. Uh, you know, the, I can't remember what it was titled exactly. But if you go in the club, we can we can figure it out together, but I'm sure it's in there. I remember giving a specific lecture about the difference between a thyroid function studies and TSH levels. Claire, my daughter had cancer of a thyroid. They excised it. Then two years later, it reappeared on the ligaments around her larynx. Tricky surgery that time. You know what? 
I was just reading an article uh, where it titled, Can Your Thyroid Grow Back? And um, it was really, really interesting because I do know that uh, my mother had, as a child, had her tonsils removed and they grew back. And I've heard of that happening. That's actually more common than you would think. But um, your tonsils are a gland and your thyroid's a gland too. So it, it was a really interesting article about how that happened. So yeah, that's, that's, that's fun. Um, well, not for your daughter, but <laughs> Claire knows what I mean. <laughs> um, let's see. What causes atrophy of the thyroid? There is a few reasons that the thyroid can atrophy, but I think it, for the most part, ends up being a genetic uh, disorder. Yeah, thyroid cancer it doesn't seem to care what age. Uh, when I was looking for another lecture, not for this one, about something else, and surprisingly, there were a lot of really young people that had thyroid um, cancer. And I, I always thought of it more of an older type uh, cancer, that, but we shouldn't do that with cancer. It affects the young and the old, right? It, do, it just doesn't discriminate. Now, there are some types of like Hodgkin's, a specific type of Hodgkin's disease that uh, usually uh, affects really young children, or uh, there's another one that ends up happening when you're, you know, like over 50. Uh, so there is things, and, and how do we know that? It's pretty interesting. It's because of the statistics that we capture via ICD-10, you know, and, and that's how we know the ages and, and things. So yeah, uh, I have a, a, a friend who, um, her husband had thyroid cancer in his 30s, and he did, he did okay. So, you know, it, it, and his brother had gotten it too. So anyway, um, let's see, 27 when she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, Claire said. Yeah, that's young. I, I don't know. Um, it would, you know, it might be something interesting to look in, to type in a search on, you know, um, thyroid, can, you know, age, 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 you can get thyroid cancer and see what type of statistics you could pull up because they're out there. Deanna says, uh, first time doing these webinars, going to YouTube to find more. Hey, we've got thousands. We, we've got a lot of webinars on and, and chunked up stuff Boyd has done for our YouTube video. It's medical coding cert. And you could see us going back like six, seven years. You know, with Boyd and I have been working together for, I keep telling Pair about a, almost a decade. So, because I think this year was eight years. So as soon as we get into 2021, I think it's nine years, 10 years. I don't know. I, I was thinking we started in 2011, but maybe it was 12. I can't remember. We'll have to, we'll have to figure it out. But you can go back and start looking at those YouTube videos and see how far back they go. And I'm glad, Deanna, that, you know, and check out the CCO club, CCO dot uh, us forward slash club uh, if you want to get more information hyperparathyroidism after my uh, total yeah uh, thyroidectomy yeah that's that can be a um, <laughs> it's a real pain <laughs> so I take um, HCTZ to, to keep my kidneys flushed out and then I have to take potassium too because of the hyperparathyroidism but I have secondary hyperparathyroidism due to kidneys not primary secondary and there's a code there's a code difference for that uh, non-cancer of thyroid can have radiation no surgery slows metabolism yeah yeah that's true uh, and you know that's the other thing that's why people who have hypothyroidism usually are um, overweight and um, and again the eyes and the the thinning hair and then with hyperthyroidism it's like the body just eats itself the metabolism is so high um, they can't maintain um, uh, fat and they uh, and and you know what when your body's eating itself it eats at the muscles too so it it really works havoc on on all the organs and um like i said people you know you can't sleep if you have trouble concentrating um you know it's not fun either one is no fun at all 
Oh, wish that they would have done that to me and save my paras. Yeah, then put them in your chest. I didn't know they could do that. I mean, I knew they would remove them. And then someone said, yeah, what they do is they put them. I think they put them in your chest. And then. OK. And then put them back after. I don't know. I can't remember why they put them in the chest. If they they continued to work in the chest, I was thinking no. Uh, but it kept them viable, right? Or maybe they continued to do the calcium for your body. Triggers the body to do the calcium when they're in the chest. So you could lose the thyroid, but if, if you kept the parathyroids, then at least the body kept telling, you know, kept the calcium levels up, but it took care of the problems that the thyroid tissue itself was causing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really fun to study this stuff. You should go out and see the procedures. Uh, so what about 60240? You have to tell me, Al Alana, uh, what is 60240? I don't have it memorized. Is that a total thyroidectomy? That wasn't part of the question, so I didn't do that one. We could do that one. Uh, if you want to go to the club in, for the students and everything, we can discuss that in there if you want. Just just put it in there for extended study. If a patient's on Synthroid, uh, is it appropriate to code? Yes, Z79890. Yes, yes it is. It's for, well, Synthroid for hormone. I don't know. The long-term use of uh, is what that code is, and then you've got uh, long-term use of other. I would use the one that's for other drug. You, um, but you know what? They're they're not going to let you probably get away with that. I've not seen them use that. It's it's set up more because you have your you have long term use of insulin. Now you have long term use of oral diabetic medication. Uh, you have long term use of anticoagulants, and then you have long term use of other. So you could use that for other. But um, I would be careful. Um, I would ask. Uh, is it appropriate uh, hormone replacement therapy? Yes, for other. I, I Yeah, you could use that. Uh, let's see. Can a person have a problem with both the thyroid and parathyroid glands at the same time? Absolutely, they can. Yes. Uh, Z90.89 is acquired absence of other organs if yes if there is not a code for acquired absence of the thyroid then yes you can use that code z9049 is acquired absence of specified parts of digestive tract 49 thyroid is not part of the digestive tract um, 89 is other organ absence of other so you would use 89 but thyroid is not part of the digestive tract And let's see, Boyd put the information about the CCO club out there, cco.us. Okay, uh, four, nine, uh, 37 years old and had a microscopic papillary carcinoma. Somehow you don't forget that long name. You're right, <laughs> because that's when my diagnosis, uh, secondary hyper, uh, parathyroid calciuria and Deanna said thank you she's a CPMA or I'm a student now for the CPM good good and TSH is a thyroid stimulating hormone correct so WIGFA I think I don't have my glasses on but uh, uh, that is correct so the stimulating, the, the TSH is the stimulating hormone level, whereas the other one is the, um, it. they track two different things. Those two blood tests, they track two different things. One's the hormone level and one's something else. <laughs> I just can't remember, but thank you for putting that in there. Uh, doctor says I'm 99.9% .9 cured. Good. <laughs> 
Can a person have both Graves and hyperthyroidism at the same time? If so, do you code both or only Graves? I, um, well, Graves is a is a condition that causes the uh, the thyroid because of the thyroid acting up. Um, I think I would only code Graves. Graves disease, bad disease, not fun. Karen, for me, based non-cancer thyroid on radiation, no surgery, slow metabolism. I'm on Synthroid, not able to burn food. Veggie is uh, my friend. You're right, Karen. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It Because it's not anything that you can do. You know, it's, it's like being in a car. Mm, it, it's like going down the highway with a Pinto next to a Corvette. You are never going to, to be able to keep up with the Corvette. Even if you put a Corvette engine in the Pinto, you're not going to keep up because the shape of the body of the Corvette allows it to go, you know, streamline, so on and so forth. It's, it's just, you know, um, that thyroid gland is just uh, so important, you know. Uh, I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism in 2003 and went on meds, caused me not to go through menopause at all, and that's wonderful. <laughs> Good for you. And she's 52, and guess what? Maria, I'm 52 as of the 7th, so we are the same age. Congratulations to us. Uh, okay, guys, I think, oh, let's see, TSH low code uh, to R. 94.6, same as abnormal TF studies. Um, I I know that I put that in that webinar. I just can't remember, guys. Uh, thank you, Shannon. We'll, I'll, we'll have to go look. And so what I'll do is I'll go find that webinar uh, in YouTube, and then we'll link that in the uh, next to this particular uh, webinar lecture. We'll, we'll link that one to this one so that uh, if everybody in the club wants to be able to go and find that. And the, the TSH studies uh, uh, one. All right, guys. That's it. Uh, appreciate you joining us. And, uh, you know, get in the club. Let us know uh, what kind of type of issues you're having with the student, you know, with your courses. And we'll, we'll do lectures on them just like this. Let us know what you need, and we'll make sure you get the answers. Bye, guys. Have a good rest of